Welcome to the lecture, guys. Um, <clears throat> before I begin, allow me to recite a poem I wrote about the material in this lecture, as perhaps this will articulate better than my theorizing ever could just what it is that I'm trying to designate by the orienting signal. What guides one's heart when lost at sea? What hides within the seed a tree? Abides the eyes when they can't see? Resides within a lockless key? What helps us heal and sets us free? That inkling of divinity. What lets our sight pass through debris? That spark of creativity. Whatever clothes it wears for you, at least this much is surely true. When you cannot yourself see through, you turn to this to seek a clue. The subtle plot of cosmic life is writ in each and every hue. To stalk it is to walk the knife, to take the strange and unknown cue. A lighthouse on a stormy night, like writing found within your soul, delighting in the ancient rite of taking part and making whole. The gift of metaphor and sight, the secret of the poet's plight, to forge a star and focus light, one's inspiration must take flight. Just what we are, one cannot say, the signs we see spell out the way. The lines we read and write each day echo with themes with which we play. So note your dreams and hear their call, their push and pull upon your mind. They often prophesize the fall. What other gems might you then find? If all the stars for you aligned, what could you do? Who could you be? If you could live your life as signed, an avatar of destiny. To hear the whispers on the wind, to smell the scent of times since past, to come to see how we have sinned, to break the spell that has been cast. To do all this and more we must, become the guide who we might trust, to lead the way and light the path, to turn the tide and quell the wrath. The man who talks to trees and birds, the girl who chased the fireflies, the one who wields not blades but words, the dreamer of infinite skies. As to the task your soul does rise, so too does it rise to meet you, for life as dance does catalyze a fresh vision of one's purview. The world will tell you where to go, and where this ends no one can know. Quiet your soul and listen here. Your fate is drawing ever near. This lecture will discuss the notion of the orienting signal, a certain type of feedback that one receives from the world at large that indicates the direction in which one must head in order to realize their valued goals. This feedback is, mechanically speaking, a consequence of the recursive interchange that occurs between the strategy which is constituted by one's conscious projections about the world and the entailed consequences of that strategy in experiential terms. This is to say that the orienting signal indicates, in the most simplistic terms, either with success or with failure, the viability of one's conscious attitude in relation to the world. So when we encounter a repeating theme in our life wherein our efforts fail to culminate in the aim for which they were intended, we can understand this as the world indicating to us that we ought to reconsider our approach as it is likely part of the problem. More specifically, we can expect to find novel indications of a flaw within the pattern of thinking with which we approach the problem encoded in the results that our efforts produce. This orienting signal broadly corresponds to the sense each of us have of the meaning and direction of our own individual lives, because we have an intuitive perception of when things are working for us and when they are not working anymore. Therefore, the material in this lecture will pertain to a meta model of epistemological orientation, which takes as its relevant facts those clues which the world offers us in the signs that have been written.
This lecture is an attempt to, con to conceptually encapsulate the experience one sometimes has of being led by a trail of breadcrumbs towards a state of immersion in the Tao, that flow state in which the individual processes and navigates the facts in real time, transforming the interpretive structure when and where it becomes necessary to do so in order to maintain contact with the flow of facts. Consequently, it will touch on the subjects of epistemology and phenomenology in equal measure, discuss the signal noise problem, and explore the notions of meditation and mindfulness. We will also discuss the experience of goosebumps and the relationship that exists between resonant conceptual associations and authentic interpersonal connections. Finally, there will be a preliminary exploration of cycles and sequences, which will set the stage for the next lecture in the series. First, allow us to briefly consider just what is meant by the orienting signal in, a more, in more poetic, met metaphorical terms. It is the feeling that one is being guided, led along an unbound path by a series of mysterious breadcrumbs and lit only by the glow of a firefly. It is the sense one has of the central human myth and it is the intuitive faculty for discerning meaning in media of all different kinds, and the capacity that exists in individuals for ascertaining the correct direction, even when one has managed to become completely lost. It is the whispers on the wind, the voices of the trees, the movement of the moon and the ebb and flow of the ocean tides. In all of these, there is one and the same pattern, a certain natural rhythm with which humanity is always attempting to synchronize. It is the feeling of engagement which is imminent in the present moment, the here and the now, that guides an individual to the time and place where they have the felt experience that they are exactly where they are supposed to be. It is at this moment that one can glimpse, in retrospect, that one was not simply wandering aimlessly, but that one was finding the way without knowing how they knew which way to go. It is the threads connected to synchronicity, whose resonance guides you step by step along the path towards immersion in the river of life, in the flow of Tao. These threads lead one towards the zone of proximal development, towards the boundary between chaos and order where transformation occurs. It's the same intuitive awareness you consult when you do a vibe check, so to speak. It is the sixth sense in the tongue of the mystic. The orienting signal is more than merely how you know where to go. It is how you know where to look. It's the intuitive sense you have for what you ought to pay attention to. How does one know in which direction to go when they are at a crossroads in lands unknown? Most people navigate their existence by relying on their perception of what is meaningful to them in order to determine how they will allocate their various energies. This is the orienting mechanism at work, as it is the force which animates the events of our life by impelling us to focus upon that to which our attention is most magnetically drawn. If we are attentive and quiet, we will often notice certain details which appear to our rational mind to be of no consequence. And yet, they have leapt out at our mind's eye, as if they have some inner significance for us, a sense of which we do not yet have. These details, when given their due, tend to serve as food for thought which subtly nourish our curiosity, making us wonder at why we took notice and helping us open ourselves up to obscure connections between such things. In other words, if we are able to both manifest and maintain receptivity in relation to that peculiar phenomenon of inexplicably finding, mean, finding meaning in things which appear inconsequential, then we are able to unlock a dormant capacity within ourselves to know which way to go without knowing how we know. This is far too often decried by the modern man as medieval superstition, as nothing more than merely wishful thinking on behalf of the individual who perceives such a sign and heeds it. 
However, this simply betrays the profound ignorance of mater modernity in the naive assumption that man throughout the ages knew so much less than the men of today. This quote is from Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, and it expresses the sentiment well. The ancient Greeks, who were the inventors of classical reason, knew better than to use it exclusively to foretell the future. They listened to the wind and predicted the future from that. That sounds insane now. But why should the inventors of reason sound insane? Hey guys, uh, thanks for watching the lecture. I just wanted to let you know that I recently made my Patreon live, so you can now follow me on there. Um, the link will be in the description and also I'll post a link in the video. Um, also I was just wanted to encourage you to subscribe and check out my other work also linked in the description.